All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakodash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham, meaning in the name Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel. Starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch on Des Moines, Iowa, coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Harbaka Korash. And um, in this lesson, what I want to touch upon is uh, the topic of who salvation is for. All right, somebody asked me a couple of questions in regards to a few precepts. All right, um on that topic and i just wanted to bring out some edification on it so lord's will to, uh lord's will this lesson be edifying but i'm gonna start off with this in the book of isaiah chapter 28 and verse uh verse 9 it says whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine right so it's being asked whom who is the lord gonna give this word into all right the proper understanding okay which is what we need all right to uh to guide us to uh salvation all right the scripture says um, in the book of James, <clears throat> uh, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. All right. So <clears throat> we have to have this word, but not only have this, having this word, but having the proper understanding of it. All right. Because anybody can pick, uh, pick up a Bible and say they believe in the word, they believe in God. But the scripture says, let me grab this. <clears throat> All right. All right, this is the book of St. John, chapter 7 and 38. It says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. All right, so you have to believe on the Lord according to what's written, according to these precepts. All right, not according to what you think and what you feel. No, according to what the Bible um, actually says. That's whom the Lord is uh, is going to um, ultimately uh, bring salvation unto. All right. But it says, whom shall he teach knowledge? Back in Isaiah 28 and 9, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Right. That's being born again. That's becoming a new creature as it is written in the book of St. John, the third chapter. All right. Nicodemus asked the Lord. OK, how shall a man? Let's go ahead and jump. Jump to that. This is St. John, chapter three and verse uh, three. It says, uh. Yahweh shall answer and said unto him, <clears throat> it says, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of the most high. All right. And being born again is putting away your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions. All right. Putting that to the side and conforming to what's actually written, uh, conforming to what uh, what the scriptures actually say. All right. It says, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of the most high. Nicod Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Right. So Nicodemus was thinking from a carnal standpoint. He's like, man, how am I supposed to be uh, born again? All right. But it says, verse uh, five, behold, shall I answer? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of the most high. So it says we have to be born of water and of the spirit. Now, the spirit, what is that? What does it mean to be born of the spirit? St. John chapter 6 and verse 63. It says, it is it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So these words uh, is the spirit, right? So we have to be born of the spirit, all right? So we have to conform ourselves to what? To these words, all right? And to show you what the water is, it's just another allegory for the word. Wash it. All right, this is the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So that water is the word. So Yahweh Shah is telling Nicodemus that, look, you have to conform yourself to these scriptures, to these precepts. That's what's going to make you born again. All right. The renewing of your mind. OK, forsaking your own way, your own thoughts and becoming a new creature by taking the form of these precepts right but going back to the book of isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9 whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast and once again the milk 
Okay, this is an allegory for the word as well. All right, let's grab this in the book of First Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. It says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. That's right. All right. So we're going to grow. All right. Through what? Taking heed unto this word. All right. Getting the basic understanding, getting rooted in that and growing. All right. And one of those things, those that, that those milk, so to speak, those milk topics that we have to understand and be rooted in is understanding who salvation is for. All right. And being unmoved in our mind, knowing that salvation is only for the nation of Israel. All right. So let's go back to Isaiah 28. In verse nine, one more time, whom shall he, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. All right. So you have to be born again. All right. You have to be built up in the basic understanding, the milk of the word. Right. And get rooted in that. Verse 10, it says for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line here a little and there a little. And this is how. All right. The word is taught. This is how you get the proper understanding of the scriptures. Just like as I read in that Isaiah 28 chapter, that ninth verse led me to like four other scriptures just to explain what that ninth verse was talking about. All right. It might be a scripture here in the book of Isaiah to get the understanding of it. You might have to go to a scripture in the book of Ephesians or right? you might have to go to the book of Acts All right, because this is a puzzle. All right. The Bible is a puzzle. It's not read like other books where you just read it from back to front and you get the understanding of it. No. All right. The, the puzzle has to be put together uh, correctly. The piece is put in the right place. This is why we jump from one precept to another precept. All right. We might grab one line in the book of Isaiah. All right. One line in the book of Genesis just to get an understanding of a scripture in the book of Revelation. This is how the Bible is properly taught. All right. To get the proper understanding of the scriptures. Verse 11, it says, for with stammering lips in another tongue, will he speak to to this people? Right. And even that word stammering, it says with stammering lips. All right. And that word stammer means to mock. So even when you listen to brothers doing lessons or out in the highways and byways, at times you might hear us uh, joke around or mock. OK, whether it's these other people or uh, uh, other philosophies or doctrines. All right. And so on and so forth. Kind of like Elijah. All right. When Elijah, you had those false uh, priests of Baal, I believe there were uh, priests of Baal. They were trying to proclaim that their God was the true, true power. Right. And uh, uh, the prophet Elijah, he was mocking them. man. OK, he was mocking them for serving other gods. So at times you hear us joke around and mock. Right. But let me go ahead and grab grab that word. All right. Isaiah 28. OK, because this isn't like the. <laughs> The Christian churches or the Catholic churches where you, you brothers is just up there, uh, up there, stale face. All right. Not enjoying it. No flavor in it. No. All right. Brothers are really into this. So at times we joke around and so on and so forth. But let me just go ahead and grab it. Isaiah 28. Where, where scripture was that? Verse uh, 11. Just to prove the point. All right. So that word stammering. All right. It's, uh, stammer is uh, it says what? Mocking. All right. Mocker. All right. So hey, you, you see that at times. All right. All right. So let's go uh, to the book of St. John. All right. This is the, really the main precept that we're going to harp on. As a matter of fact, let me pull it up on here. All right. This is the book of St. John. Chapter three in the world famous verse 16. All right. It says uh, <clears throat> for the most high. So love the world. You know what? I'm going to start up. All right. St. John chapter three and verse 14, it says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Now, what is this talking about? All right. This is talking about what happened to us in the wilderness in numbers. Man, uh, is it 26 or is it 23? All right. This is the book of numbers. Ah, uh, man. Serpent. All right. All right. Yeah, this is Numbers chapter 21 and verse uh, 
5, all right? So this is what Yahweh Shai is in reference to in this St. John, the third chapter, all right? So just so we can understand the context and whom the Lord was speaking of, all right? This is Numbers chapter 21 and verse 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord Yahweh and against thee. Pray unto the Lord Yahweh that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Right. All right. So this is the story that Yahweh Shai was referencing. Verse nine. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. All right. So whenever when when we got bitten with those serpents in the wilderness, all right, we looked unto this unto this pole, all right, and we and we were healed, okay. And Yahweh Shai, and this was a uh, uh, symbolic for what was to come. This actually happened, but this was symbolic of what was to come of Yahweh Shai being our salvation, being the healer of our iniquities and our sins, man. All right, so going back to St. John chapter 3, and verse 14, it says, And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Right. Now, back in the wilderness, who was all there? It was only the Israelites, man. Okay. It wasn't talk about uh, the Moabites. All right. If they were bitten, then they could look upon the serpent and so on and so forth. No, this was speaking of all Israel. And the same thing written here in this, uh, this chapter as well. All right. But St. John chapter 3 and verse uh, 15 it's or verse 14 and Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life now even in that numbers all right whoever was looking upon that serpent whosoever looked upon that brass serpent they were going to be healed but who was there who was the Lord speaking to it was speaking to the Israelites that were there man all right so just because it says whosoever doesn't mean that it applies to just anybody in the world right it's applying unto whom these things were written to and first and foremost these scriptures were written are right, into the israelites man and to none other all right this bible is only for the israelites another nation shouldn't even have these scriptures in their hand because it's not for them just to prove that psalms 147 and 18 or 19 he showeth his word unto jacob now what's the word all right the word is these holy scriptures the bible right that's where you find the word of the lord right it says he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Right. So the Lord hasn't dealt with another nation as he's dealing with the nation of Israel. He hasn't shown this word unto another nation as he's shown it unto Israel. Any other nation can go and go to Barnes and Noble all right, or get on Amazon and order a, a, King, James, a King James Bible and read it. Right. But the proper understanding isn't given unto them. This word is not given unto another nation, plain and simple. So if this word isn't even given to another nation, how is salvation given unto another nation? All right. But anyways, it says, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. So this word is only for the nation of Israel, man. All right. So let's go back to the book of St. John chapter 3 and verse 15 that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life for the most high so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life right and this is a christian's favorite precept all right to, to try and prove excuse me give me one second all right now, like I was mentioning, this is a Christian's favorite precept to try and show you that uh, uh, that salvation is for anybody. It doesn't matter what race you are, what nationality, none of that. But contrary to popular belief, the Lord is dealing with one nation of people, man. All right. And that's the Israelites. Now, this word world. OK, is the Greek word cosmos. All right. Let me go ahead. And as a matter of fact, let's just grab, grab the precept first. This is to show you what that who what world is speaking of here. See, when we read the word world, all right, you just think that it's talking about everybody, okay, on the earth, right? 
but there's three words for the word world in the New Testament. And we're going to go into it. Isaiah 45 and 17. It says, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting sal salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Right. So the Lord refers to the nation of Israel as a world, the world of Israel. So when it says for God so loved the world, the world of who? The world of the Israelites. All right. The Lord loves the Israelites, man. As a matter of fact, let's grab another precept just to show you that he set his love upon the Israelites, man. All right. And no other nation, no other nationality. Plain and simple. All right. This is Deuteronomy 7. And let's start at verse 6. For thou art in holy people. Now, who's this speaking to? Who's the Lord speaking to? Well, this is in the book of Deuteronomy. All right. Moses speaking unto the children of Israel in the wilderness, man. Okay. This is a matter of fact. This is go real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 1. In verse one, it says, these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side, Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Haz Hazarath and, and Dizabah, right? So this is the word that was sent unto the Israelites, all right? This word is for the Israelites. So when we're reading here in the book of Deuteronomy 7 and 6, it says, for thou are in holy people. Who is in holy people? The Israelites. All right, holy means separate, okay? The Lord separated us from the rest of the other nations. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord, Yahweh thy power. The Lord, Yahweh thy power, had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So here it is, we're reading about the Lord having favorites. The Lord has a special people whom he likes above anybody else on the earth. It says, unto himself above all the people that are upon the face of the earth so not only are we special unto the lord but he made us above everybody else on earth man so anybody else on the earth is beneath the israelites okay plain and simple this would be considered a racist statement all right racist just means to be for your race for your people what well, the lord is for the israelites man let's keep reading though it says but because the lord loved you loved who the israelites right even in the book of Malachi, in the book of Romans, it says, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. So the Lord loves Jacob. All right. And that's speaking to the whole nation, the whole nation that came out of Jacob, man. All right. All the Israelites, the Lord loves Jacob and he hates Esau. All right. The Lord loves the Israelites above the rest of the other nations on the planet Earth. It says, but because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the, out of the, uh, oh man, I skipped a whole verse. All right. Uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 7, it says, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people for you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of, king of Egypt. So we see here that the Lord loves <coughs> the nation of Israel. Right. And did that change? <laughs> this is the book of Malachi, chapter three, and verse six. For I am the Lord, Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So in the Old Testament, we read about the Lord loving the nation of Israel above all other nations. Right. And in the New Testament. All right. That didn't change, man. OK. So St. John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world. And we read in Isaiah, the 45th chapter, that that world that is speaking of is the world of Israel, that he gave his only begotten son. Now, who did the Lord give his son for? For the nation of Israel. Let's grab this real quick. This is Acts. Nowhere in the Bible are you going to find all right, where the Lord, where it says that the Lord sent his son to die. All right. For a Moabite, an Edomite, all right, an Elamite, all these other heathen nations. No, it was for uh, the nation of Israel, man. Okay. But this is the book of Acts. And there are certain places where our, uh, four, uh, our forefathers, okay, that were going after the ways of the heathens, where they were being uh, uh, called Gentiles and so on and so forth. But that's another topic for another time. This is the book of Acts chapter 5. In verse, uh, what am I looking for? Verse 29, it says, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey the most high rather than men. 
All right, so we're going to do what the Lord says as opposed to what a man says, all right? It says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of the Most High. So if it ain't in the scriptures, it don't matter, man. All right, this is the book of Acts chapter 5 and verse 30. The power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand. Okay, let me slow it down. Verse 31. Him hath God exalted, speaking of Yahweh Shai, with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Right. So the Lord gave up Yahweh Shai. To give what? Repentance to the Israelites and forgiveness of sins to the Israelites and be a prince and a savior for the Israelites, man. Okay. Plain and simple. Let's grab one more on that. On that note, before we finish that, St. John 3 and 16. This is uh, Romans chapter 9 and verse 3. All right. And this is the Apostle Paul speaking. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Yahweh Shai for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Who are Israelites, right? <coughs> so Paul is an Israelite, all right? From the tribe of Benjamin, when you read in the book of Romans, the 11th chapter. All right, but let's keep reading. It says, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption? So the Israelites pertain the adoption. So what does that mean? What's the adoption? All right, let's look up that word. The Israelites pertain the adoption. All right, it says, uh, my bad, wrong verse. Whom pretended the adoption. Now the word adoption, it says adoption, adoption as sons. That relationship which God was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites in preference to all other nations, right? So there it goes right there. So this is the relationship that the Lord, all right, has established between us and his people above uh, uh as opposed to the other nations man so this is a special relationship that we have that the other nations don't have man okay and that they can't have all right <coughs> plain and simple right so the israelites pertain the adoption right and the glory and the covenants okay the old and the new covenant as for what the Israelites and the giving of the law that was given unto the Israelites. We read that in Psalms 147 as well. And the service of the Most High and the promises all to the Israelites. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Yahweh Shai came. So Yahweh Shai came for who? The Israelites. Who is over all the Most High blessed forever a month. Okay. So plain and simple. All right. So the Lord came for the nation of Israel, man. No way around it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to grab one more. This is Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. All right. It says, and she shall bring forth a son. Who is the she? Is speaking of Mary. All right. Yahweh Shai's mother. And she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai. Right. It says Jesus, but the Lord's name was in Greek. His name was Hebrew. Right. And in the proper Hebrew, Hebrew, the pure Hebrew is pronounced Yahweh Shai. Okay. It says, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai for he shall save his people from their sins. Right. So here it is. We're reading that Yahweh Shai will save his people from their sins. Then you will have to ask yourself, well, whom? who's the Lord's people? Is anybody just the Lord's people? Is everybody just the Lord's people? Everybody on the earth is everybody's just the Lord's people. Okay. Well, let's read it. What does the Bible say? Matthew chapter two. We're just going to jump over one, one chapter. All right. Matthew two, uh, Matthew chapter two in verse uh, six. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of these shall come a governor. Speaking of Yahweh Shai. All right. That's why it's uh, uppercase. The G is uppercase there. It says, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So the Lord's people are the Israelites. Okay. And that's whom, when we read in Matthew 1 and 21, one more time, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people. We read that's the Israelites, right? 
from their sins. Okay, so Yahweh Shai has been sent forth to redeem and to save and to give salvation unto the Israelites. That was his whole purpose, man. And Yahweh Shai said himself, I came not to do mine own will, but the will of my father. So if the heavenly father sent him to do that, well, Yahweh Shai is, is, uh, came to fulfill that, man. So let's go back to St. John chapter 3 and verse 16. <clears throat> St. John 3 and 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So that whosoever that is speaking of is within the nation of Israel. And let's go into another precept where that's written. Because Christians hang up, like to hang themselves up on that whosoever. All right, this is Acts chapter 2 and verse 26. It says, No. This is Acts chapter 2 and verse. My bad. Bear with me. Okay. 22. All right, 21. All right, Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. Salakia. It says. <clears throat> It says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And there you go. That's where Christians like to close the book. All right. And end it off right there, man. <laughs> All right. Well, first and foremost, this is a quote from the Old Testament. OK. This isn't a new thing that Yahweh Shai came on the scene. All right. And switched up the game. No. All right. This is literally a quote from the Old Testament. All right. So let's read it here. Joel chapter two and verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered for in Mount Zion. Right. And in Jerusalem, these are cold words for the Israelites. Mount Zion, the Lord's holy monument. <coughs> right. And that's talking about the Israelites for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. So that deliverance is only for who? The Israelites, man. It says, as the Lord Yahweh has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. And once again, see, the Lord puts in, the Lord makes it very clear whom Yahweh Shah was sent for, whom salvation is for, right? If you have eyes to see, because even then it says in the remnant in whom the Lord shall call, right? So who is a part of that remnant? Who's the remnant speaking of? Let's grab this in the book of Isaiah, the 10th chapter. Isaiah 10 and 21. It says, the remnant shall return even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty power. So a small number or a few compared to the totality of the nation of Israel. The totality of Jacob is going to actually return and repent and turn from their iniquities and turn from their sins and therefore receive salvation. Right. But it says the remnant shall return even the remnant of who of Jacob unto the mighty power. For though thy people Israel, once again, showing you whom the Lord's people is, for though thy people Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The con consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Right. So that remnant. Excuse me. So that remnant. OK, that that was spoken about in that Joel. All right. Is what a remnant of what of Jacob of the Israelites. All right. So let's go back. Joel chapter 2 and 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered for Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So it's very clear, man. And I'm going to just jump up in this chapter, Joel 2 and 27, since we hear. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord, Yahweh, your power and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And that's plain to the point. And we already read the precept in the book of Malachi. All right. The Lord changes not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Why is it throughout the Old and the New Testament that the Lord is constantly talking about the remnant of Israel? All right. Jacob. OK. The promises that he promised unto our forefathers and so on and so forth. Man. OK. It's the same narrative, man, throughout the, the entirety of the Holy Scriptures. Right. So let's go back to the Acts. Chapter 2 and verse 22. Uh, I mean, 21, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. So the Lord is speaking to who? The Israelites, man. Okay. Well, of course, this is uh, Paul speaking, but you know, Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book. So this is a message. All right. Once again, to the Israelites, man. 
ye men of Israel, hear these words, man. Hear what? <laughs> that whosoever among you that's calling upon the name of the Lord is going to be delivered, man. All right. And it also says, he that nameth the name of the Lord, depart from iniquity. So you have to repent and be calling upon the name of the Lord and be of the nation of Israel to actually receive that salvation, man. Now let's go to the book of, um, let's go to the book of Isaiah. This is a prophecy real quick. We just going to end it off with these last two. And I wasn't going to those different words and, um, for the word world, but just to briefly explain it, you can look it up as three words for the word, uh, world in the new Testament. Cosmos, Oinkamini, and Eon, man, right? So when you read the word world in that St. John 3 and 16, we already read the precept in Isaiah 45 that is talking about the world of Israel, all right? But it's different words for the word world, man. Eon being a particular age, all right? A time period, man, right? You have Oinkamini, which means all the inhabitants, man, of the world, the sense that most people think about when they think about world. And then you have cosmos, which is a particular arrangement or order or group of people. Okay. But anyways, Isaiah 59 and um in uh 20, it says, in the Redeemer, who's the Redeemer? Yahweh Shai. All right. Who came to redeem his people from their sins? It says, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. So Yahweh Shai is only going to come and deliver those that what? Turn from their iniquities, meaning repent, turn from transgressions in Jacob. So you have to be within that seed line. You have to be of the seed of Jacob. Plain and simple. All right. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. All right. So let's grab this. This last one. All right. This is the book of Acts chapter two and verse 27. It says. No, nah, not Acts 2 and 27. Acts 13. I'm tripping. All right. This is the book of uh, Acts chapter 13 and verse 22. And it reads, and when he had removed Yep, it says, and when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath the Most High, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Yahweh Shai. Right. So Yahweh Shai was raised as a savior for who? The Israelites. All right, this is pretty plain, man. We can go all day and, and go through plenty of scriptures showing you that Yahweh Shai was raised up for the Israelites. Okay. Verse 24. When John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. So even when John was doing his baptisms, which was a prelude of Yahweh Shai, all right, baptizing us through the Holy Spirit, right? Who was John baptizing? He was only baptizing the Israelites, man. John wasn't in the wilderness baptizing Edomites, all right? Baptizing Ishmaelites, baptizing any other nation. He was only doing that for the Israelites, and that was a prelude of what Yahweh Shai would come to do, right? It says, when John had first preached before the coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, whom think ye that I am? I'm not he, but behold, there cometh one after me whose shoes of his feet I'm not worthy to lose. Speaking of Yahweh Shai. Verse 26, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham and whosoever among you, among who? The children of the stock of Abraham. Whosoever among you feareth the most high to you is this word of, of this salvation sent, right? So this word of salvation is only sent unto what? The children of the stock of Abraham. And you go into that word stock. It says. The word stock. <clears throat> it says kindred, offspring, family, stock, tribe, nation. All right. So you have to come from that special seed line, man. And that in the uh, the in the promise came uh, unto Abraham and it fell upon Isaac and then rested upon Jacob. So that line, man. So anybody that's outside of that line, salvation is not for them. Plain and simple, man. All right. But that's all I'll grab, you know, 
through the Spirit, man. Lord's what I was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.